Welcome to the Quantum Theory Podcast. <laughs> right. Well, well, on that note of emergence, I'd love to kind of continue as well on this informational theoretic paradigm and, and framing emergence sort of as this idea of information entropy or, or sort of the idea that as the universe from the Big Bang all the way through now to the future is essentially sort of an informational and entropic process, which sort of brings about, I believe, if I'm saying this correctly, non-equilibrium thermodynamic type exactly. of states yep. um, and, and dissipative structures. And yep. I would love to kind of start going yep. down that rabbit hole and getting kind of an idea of how that works. Yep. Um, yeah, it turns out that maybe life isn't just some random thing that magically happened here on Earth but it's an expression of some laws of physics that should happen everywhere if you have the right um, setting. And the setting is you need some low entropy source of energy like the sun, and then you need some ambient field like a, an atmosphere or an ocean. And then what happens is you, you have this um, gradient in entropy or free energy or whatever. And what the universe hates is having these gradients and what it tries to do by shifting around entropy is, is equalize these things. And that, um, Prigogine, he was called, he did this, I think in the sixties where he started to talk about this, this dissipative structures and how it, for some magical reason, um, this dissipation goes hand in hand with structure formation. So you see this on a physical, chemical um, level where um, like convection cells, if you heat up water, where you suddenly have these structures that start to move around to really just get rid of this excess energy or the, the storm on Jupiter, which has been there for 300 years. It's like this convection thing going on, which already a whirlpool is, is like an emergence dissipative structure, which, which is it has some kind of complexity. And then um, I think Jeremy England, he's called, who picked this up and applied this to more biological systems where um, the claim is metabolic systems, life biological systems, what they're actually doing is really efficiently getting rid of this gradient <laughs> and this structure formation. And especially replication is also a really good strategy to yeah, to, to do this, which means that, yeah, this is, and the non-equilibrium thermodynamic aspect is, yeah, you have the sun and the, the earth and your, this non-equilibrium is what's driving this entropy dissonance or whatever you want to call it is driving this structure formation from literally how, how, um, crystals arrange to, yeah, more complex things. And then, yeah, maybe applied to biological life. And the reason why this seems to be true is that recently we keep discovering organic molecules on comets. Yeah. <laughs> and again, like this is something which we're only very recently have become aware of. I mean, the idea of panspermia that life was brought onto earth has been around for ages, but if if this is the mechanism, then everywhere, if you have, yeah, a sun and some atmosphere, this should be going on. This should be happening. This assembly of these complex molecules, which just allow this dissipation of, of, yeah, the, the energy and the, the entropy system. That just, it just makes so much more intuitive sense to me to, to imagine this sort of, uh, a sort of guiding hand beneath life that is pushing it upward. It's kind of how I conceptualize it towards greater and greater and greater complexity, just because from just an, in, you know, it's important as, as you speak of very heavily as well as the intuitive aspect of these things is to really that first person subjective type of understanding of things. And it's, and it's just never made sense that life has this arrow of complexity. It just gets better and better and better, which is, I guess, a subjective term, but more and more and more, more complex. Compl I mean, it, more it, complex. It, 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 it computes more information. Right. And why does it not go backwards at any time? You know, why, why is that just the inherent forward arrow? And so, so if I'm understanding as well this correctly and to try to bring this down to earth as well for the audience. So, so we humans and, and all sort of complex structures 
is an emergent phenomena so that we as sort of low entropic, highly complex states can channel structured energy and convert it into entropy, which is the universe's drive is to increase entropy over time. Is is that the basics? <laughs> um that seems to be like the formal way of, of what's happening in detail. But what you touch upon, I find, is a, a lot bigger and more important. You, you're saying there's like this hand, this helping, this, there seems to be a, an arrow, a teleology, a thing it, the universe wants to go towards, which, um, you, which is something if you say that to any scientist, they freak out because they're saying, no, this is not possible. The universe has no purpose. Come on, please don't, don't say the universe wants to do something. This is some, probably some religious thing you're trying to bring in there or some new agey, whatever. And <laughs> this I find is so frustrating because we, we are seeing this. We are seeing that there is this arrow, this, the universe is assembling more complex structures at least here on earth although the whole greater context is towards disorder and i call it the the will to complexity to give it a name mm. to say there seems to be a force and it's physical it's not some god just sprinkling stuff on it it seems to be inherent emerging out of the laws of physics that the universe has a tendency it wants to assemble complex structures and it does so continually and what we're doing i mean first it's life and then life has this inner perspective and consciousness and then this consciousness starts to build electronic circuits which now start to behave in like semi-conscious ways um that seems very very yeah teleological towards greater and greater expressions of complexity and i find it wild that this isn't a bigger discussion that for the physicalists it's just a brute force get over it that's it's just the way it is there's no reason to it and that you're not allowed to say hey it's there seems to be a force that we're missing and but until you yeah, can formalize it better, uh, you're not going to get these people on board. So with this whole non-equilibrium stuff, maybe that's, that's yeah, that's going to help the, the discussion a bit. Thank you for watching this clip from the Quantum Theory Podcast. If you'd like to watch the full episode, click the up next tile on this screen or click the link in the description. See you there.